today we're going to look at the 2011 higher level U value question from construction studies. Now, in this question, it refers to a house that was built in 1970s. Now, it's slightly unusual because they're just using a single leaf block, which is a hollow core block. So then the wall is rendered externally and then plasterboard is fitted on the internal surface using dabs of plaster adhesive. So the information we're given in this question is that you have to calculate the U value. So we're given the information of 15 mil in thickness for the render, the hollow core block 215 mils, then the air space between the plasterboard and the block is 10 mil and that's where the plaster adhesive is used so there's a 10 mil air space there and then internal plaster then is of 12 mil in uh, thickness the plasterboard now they're not referring to the plaster that has been put on the plasterboard the skim coat at all in this question they're just referring to the plasterboard now the information you're given then for the next section then is the resistance of the external surface then resisticity of the render then resistance of the hollow core block then resistance of the airspace conductivity then of plasterboard and then the resistance of the internal space now so to start off this question is always a good idea uh, especially inside in any exam number your questionnaire make sure you put down 5a because there is a 5b in this question that we'll look at a calculation part then in this question start off with a sketch so the sketch that we start off with we'll start off with the plasterboard we leave the air space then then we have the block so we put in a symbol for block now we're not going to be too worried about now if we put in a dotted line here just to show that it's a hollow core block and then on the outside we put on the render so we can put on a symbol then for render on the outside then for the inside we might use just dots for the plaster now and then we start labeling this question so the first thing i always label in the question is isr so that we don't forget it so that's the internal surface resistance it will always be given to you next plaster label it and underneath it then all these measurements have to change be changed into meters so it's a good idea to write in we'll say write in the thickness of this plasterboard so it's 12 mils so to change that in meters it's 0 0.012 mils so what you'll see the 12 is still there but you're putting it change it to meters divided by a thousand and this is the answer you get here now we have air so we write in air here then the size of the air is 10 mil so we put in 0 0.010 next we'll take our block so we bring out a label here for the block so we write down block and the size of the block is 0.215 so that's the thickness of that block in meters then we have the render So the render in this question is 0 0.015 and then the final thing we put down is ESR, external surface resistance. Now the next stage of this question is to draw up a table. So in the table, the table consists of component, so that's where you have your block, your air, your plaster then we put in our thickness then if we're given resisticity we put in a small r for resisticity and it's a good idea to write a multiply sign in front of it then so that you know what you have to do and just get into the habit of putting that multiply sign inside here then if you're given conductivity which is small k put a divide sign in front of it and then the aim of this question is to fill this right hand column here and add up this right hand column here to get a total resistance now we place t in this column here so this is the first figure you put into your calculator and then you'll either multiply it 
by the resistivity or divided by the conductivity, depending on what you're given in the question. So if we start filling out the table, so in the table we always start, and it's a good idea, to start with the inside and work our way out. And the reason I refer to it this way is, if I draw an arrow here, that's the direction the heat is travelling in. So if we want to calculate the U value, we want to see how good it is at stopping heat from escaping. So it's a good idea to start in this question, start with our ISR, then we have our plasterboard. So if we write down plaster B, then we have air, then we have the block, then we have the render, and then the next piece we have then is the ESR. Now, so if we start putting in thicknesses in the table then, so the thickness for ISR doesn't have any, resisticity for it doesn't have any of it, conductivity doesn't have any, and then in the table, if we find it in the table, and how it's wrote in the table is resistance of internal surface. So the answer here is 0 0.104. So this is the figure that we'll be placing in there. So it's just given as I S R. Okay. So if we write it in here, it's 0 0.104. Now the next one then is the plasterboard. So this is where we start putting in a thickness. So it's 0 0.012. Now if we put in all the thicknesses then as we go down along, air then is 0 0.010, the block 0 0.215, render 0 0.015, and then ESR, no thickness given for that, resistivity, no measurement for that, conductivity, and then we're given a resistance, so if we look at the table, the information we're given, Resistance of external surface is 0 0.048. So this is where we place it in here, 0 0.048. Now, if we look at the table then and start looking at information we're given. So the information we're given in this question is, and it's important that you understand the difference between resistivity and resistance. Okay. If you're given resistance, and you'll notice in the table they've made it slightly easier as well, that they've given, wrote it as small r here and capital R. So any time we're given capital R, we just go straight to the right hand side of the table and put in that information. So if we look here, the resistance of the airspace. So we're given the resistance of the airspace this time. So the resistance of the airspace is point, so if we find air here, 0 0.170. Now, we're also given the resistance of the block. So the resistance of the block then goes in here. So 0 0.210. Now all that's left then is the, res the plasterboard. So if we find the plasterboard, and in this case here, conductivity of plasterboard. So we're given conductivity. So we have to put that in under conductivity. So we find conductivity here. So conductivity is 0 0.160. And then, slightly unusual in this question, that they give you resistivity also. And this time the resistivity is for the render. So the resistivity of the render here is as follows. So resistivity of the render is 2.170. So you find where render is and then Resistivity, small r, and it's 2.170. Now, then this stage, then, if we're given this, we're given this, we don't have to be given this. Now, in this question, we have this, so we just draw lines through information here that we do not have to calculate. So, in this question, it's not that difficult. We've only two things to work out. 
So the two things we have to work out is the resistance of the plasterboard. So to calculate out the resistance of the plasterboard, very simply, it's placing in point zero one two, and this time divided by your conductivity of one or point one six zero. So the answer we get to that over here is 0 0.075. Now to calculate then for render, so render, this time you're given resistivity, so we put into our calculator the size of the render, so it's 0 0.015 and this time you multiply it by 2.17. Now the answer we get here then is 0 0.03255. Now it's a good idea to put it to three decimal places. So to change it to three decimal places, you look to the fourth decimal place. If that figure is five or above, you round up. If it's four or lower, you leave the third figure as it is. So in this question we have it as 5 so that means this gets moved up so the answer that we're going to write down is 0 0.033 Now when we have this calculated then it's a simple matter of just adding up all these figures here and getting the total resistance of the wall. So the total so a simple matter and this is where students fall down on is inputting information into calculator so you have to be careful putting in this information especially after going to the trouble of calculating everything correctly And it's a good idea if when you're using a scientific calculator, you can actually see all these figures up here and you can hit the replay button if you want to go back and make sure you have everything put into the calculator correctly. So, and another thing about a scientific calculator, it tends to love fractions. So, just change it back to decimal place. So, the answer we're getting here, 0 0.64 I would put in a zero here to have it as your three decimal places. Now, that's the first part. Now, the very last step on this question is to calculate the U-value. So, we write down the formula for U-value. So, the U-value is equal to 1 over RT. And there is a mark in the exam given for writing down that formula. So, U is equal to 1 over 0 0.6 zero. So if we put 1 into our calculator and divide it by 0 0.640, the U value we'll get then is 1.5625. So again, rounding it to three decimal places, the U value is 1.5625. And what we do in the question then is to write down the units. So the units for U value is W forward slash meter squared degrees Celsius. And that's the answer to part A of this question.